I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. You can see the book right there in the poster. Well, I'm wearing my cowboy hat today, which means we are reviewing another Western. In particular, Larry McMurtry's sequel to Lonesome Dove, The Streets of Laredo. There's my hardcover copy, and we also have a little paperback that I've been reading. Also, I listen to the audible.com version too. So, I buy stuff in hardcover, paperback, and I get the audio versions. So if you're thinking of buying my book, you can buy it in three different versions also. Plug over. So let's talk about Streets of Laredo. You know, when I was a kid, <laughs> like a little kid, just a kid, like junior high age, in art class we had a ceramics teacher and I made this little ceramic cowboy. I thought I'd bring him out for the video of the Streets of Laredo. Made him and painted him. It's a little cowboy. We'll call him Gus McRae. Texas Ranger. He died, though, in Lonesome Dove. Spoiler alert for Lonesome Dove. If you haven't read that, Gus McRae dies at the end of that one. Streets of Laredo is the sequel. So Gus ain't in the sequel. Ain't in it. Actually, he is in it because he was such an amazing character. He was such a larger-than-life character. In the first three books of the Lonesome Dove four-book series, Dead Man's Walk, Comanche Moon, Lonesome Dove, Gus McRae was such a larger-than-life character that you still feel him in every page of this book. He's still there. He's still there like as a character, even though he's not. Just He just is Gus McRae and Woodrow Call, the two Texas Rangers that take us through the four-book Lonesome Dove series. If you watched my review of Lonesome Dove, and I will link to it at the end of this video, if you've watched that, you know I love Gus McRae and Woodrow Call, the two Texas Rangers. Probably the single greatest duo of characters ever written in literature. And I ain't just joking about that, man. Lonesome Dove won the Pulitzer Prize because of that. And if you watch the miniseries with Tommy Lee Jones and Robert Duvall, who played Gus McRae and Woodrow Call, you know what I'm talking about. Now, there was a miniseries made of uh, the sequel, Streets of Laredo, and it, it had James Garner, who played uh, Woodrow Call rather than uh, Tommy Lee Jones, and he did a good job. In fact, every one of the Lonesome Dove books has been made into a miniseries. So if you don't want to read the books... You'd be crazy if you didn't want to read the books. You'd be out of your mind if you didn't want to read the books. But if you don't want to, you can watch the miniseries. They're good too. But if you're a smart person, an intelligent person, a person that uses any type of logic and reasoning, you would certainly read the books first and then watch the miniseries. And I'm assuming that you are one of those smart type of people. You wouldn't be watching my videos if you weren't. The Streets of Laredo, the sequel to Lonesome Dove. Lonesome Dove's right there. Streets of Laredo right there. Lonesome Dove was written in like 87. Streets of Laredo was uh, came out in 93. I think Dead Man's Walk, which actually is a prequel to all of them, came out in the late 90s, and then Comanche Moon came out in the late 90s, too. They're all awesome. They're all awesome. But let's talk about the streets of Laredo. We got some of our characters have survived through all the stories, and, and uh, you know, Gus McRae is dead. Lorena, his lover, is heartbroken. She's married. P.I., the, the cowboy, the, the farmhand with the heart of gold. You know, Gus McRae was kind of a scoundrel. And, you know, that's why that's why Lorena loved him. He was a scoundrel. But, you know, like every woman that loves the bad guy, they eventually settle down with the, the easygoing farmer and just have a good life. And that's what's happened. That's how we start the streets of Laredo. All the action is over from Lonesome Dove. 
and Lorena and P.I. have settled down on the farm. Woodrow Call is also heartbroken over Gus McRae's death. He becomes a hired gun, a bounty hunter. Texas Ranger, he goes back into Texas Ranger and becomes a bounty hunter. And then what happens is we get the uh, Mexican bandit, Joey Garza, who starts robbing trains. And the, the, the tycoon of the railroad sends out his, his underling to uh, hire Woodrow Call, the bounty hunter, to hunt down this Joey Garza, kill him so them trains will stop being robbed. And, you know, Woodrow Call, he wants to get his old band of cowboys back together. So he goes up to P.I., who's about the only one of them left. <laughs> he says, hey, man, come with me to help. Come help me hunt down this, this Joey Garza, this train robber. We got a, we got a bounty on him. Let's, let's go collect it. And P.I. is kind of like, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's rekindle the old Texas Ranger in days. And let's go on an adventure. But remember, he's married to Lorena. P.I. married Lorena. Now, Lorena would have been up for the adventure, you know, in days past when she was younger, but now she just wants to live on a farm with her kids and, and you know, just take it easy. And so P.I., he says, yeah, man, Woodrow, I ain't going to go with you. I ain't going with you on a bounty hunting trip. As much as I'd love to, I ain't going to do it. And so P.I. stays back, and Woodrow, and Woodrow Call has to go by himself to hunt this bounty. But, of course, he has to have this tag along. The uh, the railroad tycoon sent his little helper out, and who ain't much of ain't much of nothing in a gunfight. I mean, he's a, he's like he's a city dude, and he don't belong in the old west, and he don't belong on a bounty hunting hunt, you know, searching for Mexican bandits. But that's all Woodrow Call has to go with him, and so they off they go to search for Joey Garza and get him to stop uh, killing people and robbing trains so it's a good old-fashioned western oh man it's awesome 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 every larry mcmurtry western is awesome from dead man's walk comanche moon lonesome dove anything for billy the barry bender narratives all of them so awesome streets of laredo super great adventure you know we got bad guys we got good guys we got chases it's like a quest it's like a medieval quest, some knights on a medieval quest just to go out and make right with the world, you know, make the world a better place by killing the bandits. And, you know, we got some great characters that return, you know, like Blue Duck. And, you know, there's some Indians, some Comanches like Mox Mox and Famous Shoes. And every time that Larry McMurtry puts them uh, Indians and Native Americans into the story, oh, man, does it get great. He does the Native American culture so well. And I think he treats it with great respect, even though they are violent. You know, they're answering violence for violence because their land is being taken over by the cowboys. And the cowboys ain't nice about taking over the land. And the Indians are re reacting with violence to violence, you know. And it's just a gripping story, a gripping adventure. And like I said, even though Gus McRae is killed off in book three, his presence still looms large in every page of book four, The Streets of Laredo. It's great. It's a story about families, you know, because P.I., as I said before, he, he decides not to go on this bounty hunt. But then he starts to feel guilty. He's like, I left, I left my comrade, you know, he's my buddy. We used to adventure together. We, were, we adventured together so much. And I just let him go off by himself to hunt this Joey Garza bandit. And so he feels guilty and he leaves his farm to go in search of Woodrow Call to help Woodrow bring in this bandit. And it's about families. It's about Lorena and how that affects her. Uh, how it affects her family, that her husband that she counted on to be the nice guy didn't turn out to be the nice guy. Turned out to be the man that was, you know, into leaving, you know, for adventure. He's a rambling man, P.I. He's a rambling man, born for leaving. And he left her. He left her. You know, and then we've got the other family. We've got Joey Garza, the bandit. You know, he's a great character. And the kid that played him in the miniseries did a great job. Oh, my gosh. I loved that guy's performance in the miniseries. The, 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 band, the guy that played the bandit, Joey Garza. Fantastic. Super duper. <laughs> Just 
a memorable character, just evil. And he's got this German rifle. I can't remember how he got a hold of it, but it's like a sniper rifle from the old West. And, and that's his, that's his weapon. And he's snipe. I mean, he can shoot a dude square in the eye from 300 yards away, you know, and that's, that's what gives him his power. You know, he's got this rifle that nobody else can compete with. And it's just a cool story. It's just a cool old West Western adventure story. And it's written by one of the greatest novelists of all time, Larry McMurtry, a Pulitzer Prize winning novelist. A guy that can write sensitivity into every scene. I mean, if you've read, if you've read The Terms of Endearment or um, The Last Picture Show, you'll know what I'm talking about because Larry McMurtry wrote those also. And those are not wild action adventure westerns like these are. Those are like introspective literary books. And Larry McMurtry can do introspective literary at the same time that he can do grand western action. And he can combine the two great... I mean, when I was writing my own fantasy novel, I studied these books, and particularly Lonesome Dove here. I studied everything about that to learn what Larry McMurtry was doing in his writing that made him so great. Because I wanted to be as great as Larry McMurtry. And I think Lonesome Dove is, is one of the perfect novels ever written. I mean, every word perfect. And The Streets of Laredo is really close to that. I recommend the series a lot. And where I was going was with Joey Garza, the Mexican bandit. We get to learn about his family, too. And we get to learn his motivations and why he's robbing trains and sniping people, you know, from cliff sides and, 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 and all the bad things he does. We, we get to learn his family. This is a very family-centered book. I mean, it's not, it's not something you want to, you know, you, you don't want to go rob trains for your family home evening night or anything like that. But... You know, you understand how family can affect the way people behave, especially in the Old West when that's really all they had. Anyway, I'm going to give, I'll, I'll wind this up. Streets of Laredo. I think you can already tell that I love it and I love Larry McMurtry. I wish I could write like Larry McMurtry. I think I'm a decent writer. But then once in a, when I read something by Larry McMurtry, I realize that my... I'm like, I, I look, I, I go to my book and I'm like, why are you such crap? After reading Larry McMurtry. <laughs> Every author has that. They, they think they're all right until they read the guys that they really love. And then they're like, why do you suck so much? I give Streets of Laredo 10 out of 10, just like I gave uh, Lonesome Dove. Because I love this series, man. The last great Western series ever written. Dead is Louis L'Amour. Dead is Zane Grey. Those guys aren't with us anymore. They're not writing stuff. And their publishers just don't publish Westerns anymore. But thank God they did publish Larry McMurtry's Westerns. They're the last ones we've got to hang on to. Until someone else does a Western. Down the road. Perhaps me. Just saying. 10 out of 10. Streets of Laredo. Go get everything by Larry McMurtry and learn how to write.